This is a response video to the video made by my mate Matt Eason over at Scholar Gladiator channel called Helmets Not Only About Protection. You will find a link in the description below. Hello everyone, so welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking and on the original video that I'm responding to, Matt Easton brings up a lot of interesting points about helmets and their function and all of the reasons why helmets have the shape and the design that they had. And on this video though, I'd like to uh, focus on the idea of why did the majority of soldiers in history, going all the way back to classical times, medieval times, even all the way up to modern times, had open-faced helmets rather than fully closed helmets, again, in the majority of cases. Now, since on the original video, Matt Easton brings up a lot of interesting points as to why open-faced helmets have been more popular than fully closed ones, I would strongly suggest you to pause this video now and actually go check out the original video I'm responding to as to have a more complete and definitely richer perspective on what I'm talking about on this video. As Matt Easton eloquently says, open-faced helmets have got some obvious advantages. For example, the ability to see better, to breathe, to hear, for example, as we see in this uh, example of an Imperial Gallic Roman helmet. But I think if we were to summarize everything together in one sentence, we can say that open-faced helmets allow soldiers to do their jobs more effectively than they would if they had fully closed ones. Now, of course, I totally agree with that, but one thing I'd like to say is that in general, as we know, with armor, we always have a trade-off between mobility and protection. When the moment you increase protection, you decrease mobility and vice versa. And in the case of a helmet, well, of course, if you increase protection, you will not only decrease mobility, so for example, the ability to move your head or perhaps extra weight on, on top of you, but you will impede some of the most basic and fundamental aspects of a soldier, which are his senses, the ability to see, the ability to hear, commands, shouts, the ability to speak, for example, to let people know, the people next to you, what's going on, whether you need help or not, and of course, breathing, heating, etc. So the Imperial Gallic helmet was an excellent example of that, but even previous helmets uh, will have a similar situation. As you can see, the face is open. Now, we can find lots of different kinds of helmets that will reflect this choice, this preference towards um, an open-faced uh, protection. And of course, you can find also exceptions, one of which is clearly the uh, knightly, the helmet of the knightly class. But one of the things that Matt says, and I totally agree with, is the fact that a knight functions in a very different way than a, no, than a common soldier. Um, a knight doesn't need to do lots of the things that normal infantry soldiers would have to do. A knight just has to wear the, the, the best armor he's got, ride his horse, arrive, charge, destroy as many people as he can. So it's, it's a different situation. And still the necessity, the need of breathing, of being able to see properly, is still reflected on the choice that many knight helmets uh, will uh, provide visors, hinges, etc. As to allow the knight to remove the protection of the face. Now, all of that is impressive, but one thing I'd like to add is, what about the samurai? Now, Matt does not own samurai armor, as far as I, as far as I know, but I do. So, here is a kabuto. So, what about kabuto? Now, this is a uh, late 16th century Tose Gusoku kabuto, but still, it's similar. I, I do have another one as well, so I'm going to show you that one too. But generally speaking, the Japanese helmet is used mostly open-faced as far as we understand, particularly looking at iconography. But as you know, the kabuto can be completed with a mask, a meng. So, theoretically, it is a closed helmet, but you can remove the mask uh, in order to change it into an open-faced helmet. So we could say that basically the mask is an alternative design that tries to achieve what a visor in medieval Europe uh, does achieve. Now, uh, is a mask as effective at protecting you as a, for example, a hound scowl a pointy visor? Absolutely not. And that is one of the reasons why I think that the samurai mostly removed uh, masks in combat, at least partially, more on that later. But it's, it's a similar concept. It's something you can wear if you want to have the full helmet on, but you can also remove it, or in whatever case you might not want to wear one. So in my opinion, although this might sound crazy, but in my opinion, the, I would consider the kabuto, the samurai kabuto, as an open-faced helmet. Because yes, you can complete it with a mask and close it, but in iconography, well, I want to say that the majority of iconography regarding duels or battle shows um, samurai not wearing the mask completely, or samurai wearing only a, part, a portion of the mask, which is this one moment. What you do, you remove the nose, okay, and as you can see, now the mask protects me, but I can breathe properly and I can see perfectly. This is also one of the ways in which the samurai were using the mask, uh, also because the mask provides uh, protection to the throat, called yodare kake. 
but in a lot of situations they wouldn't wear it completely. Now before you say, yes, a samurai technically is a lot more similar to a knight than it is to a foot soldier, but it also depends on what era we're talking about because early samurai were mounted forces, but as we get to the late Sengoku period or late 16th century, late 15th century, then uh, no, a lot of samurai will become foot soldiers and will be using gunfire. And gunfire, so aquabus, there will be aquabusiers, is an excellent link to the next section of this video as to why, particularly in modern times, we prefer using open-faced helmets. So when we talk about a medieval era, classical era, then yes, I totally agree, Renaissance even, uh, I totally agree the reasons are the ones that Matt um, states on this video. So uh, clearly, you know, breathing, etc., being able to function more effectively as a soldier. If you were to wear a fully closed helmet, uh, you might not function properly as a soldier. It's, it's obvious, it's blatant as you look at history. But as we go into modern day, I'd like to expand a little bit on what Matt said, because I think that as we move into modern day, there is one very important factor that I think is the reason why modern military don't use fully closed helmets, and that is center of mass. Modern day military, law enforcement, anti-terrorist units, you name it, they are all taught one common principle. When shooting, aim center of mass, meaning the torso. Why? Because that is the biggest portion of your body, isn't it? So when you look at a human being, the torso, so from, for example, the base of the neck all the way to the uh, waistline, represents the bigger target. That is when you aim when you shoot, and that is because the whole idea is that it will maximize your percentage of hitting the target. So the idea of, I'm going to shoot him in the head, or the idea of, I'm going to shoot him in the leg, so he, I put him down without killing him, all of this is basically movie or fantasy or video games, because in reality, you are taught to shoot center of mass. Now, of course, you've got exceptions to this. You know, you might have a sniper in extremely highly trained units who might be shooting at a target who is unaware. That is a completely different situation, a completely different scenario is again, for example, if you went full ninja on a guard of a, an enemy barrack and now you are pointing the gun at point blank and, and you shoot him in the head, that is a completely different situation. But in normal um, situation when you are engaging an enemy who is going to return fire, then you shoot center of mass because you want to make sure that you hit him before he returns fire, hence increasing not only the chances of hitting him but also uh, consequently your chances of remaining alive. Now I understand that probably among you watching this video there are people who are like champions of Call of Duty and they're like, yeah that's not true because you know, when I shoot my opponents every 10 soldiers, I shoot a seven a headshots. Well, that's good for you. But one huge difference between a video game and so all uh, virtual reality and uh, real life is the psychological impact, which is zero uh, in, a, in a situation of, of gaming. And it's, you know, you've got lots of stress going on the moment your life is at stake. And that is one, one it's only one of the factors that will, that are key factors in the fact that you choose to shoot center of mass. You don't shoot limbs because they're smaller. They don't shoot a head because it's smaller. It's a smaller target and therefore the, the chances of you missing in a, in, when under stress are higher. So one of the reasons why the helmets are not closed is because, again, it makes more sense to shoot center of mass. Another question is, uh, would we have the technology to create fully enclosing um, head protection? Well, I mean, all right. So I understand this is not armored, but if you armor this and you make this bulletproof, um, you can understand that you could fully enclose the helmet of your soldiers without even having too much problem with visibility. But still, breathing will be a problem, price will be a problem, and again, still the majority of your soldiers will be hit in the torso. Now, the ability, the technological ability to actually build fully closed helmets as opposed to open face helmets is what leads us into the third and final section of this video, and that is dealing again with ancient Rome. Now Matt Easton talks about the fact that the Roman military chose um, open-faced helmets as we have seen. But I'd like to expand on that because the question is, but could the Romans actually build fully functional, fully closed and fully enclosing uh, helmets for the military anyway? I mean, we are talking about the Iron Age after all, not medieval times. And the answer to that is quite obvious. Look at gladiatorial games. Gladiators had fully functional and very effective, very well made, fully closed helmets. In fact, there were quite a few versions of it, depending on the gladiatorial class, if you were a secutor, if you were a murmillo, etc. So not only the Romans could create fully enclosing helmets, 
but they even had lots of different shapes and lots of different variations and designs. So why did they choose not to equip the military with, for example, gladiatorial helmets to protect their face? So the answer to this question is, yes, the Romans could have done it, but they still chose not to. And personally, in this case, I don't think it's a price situation, because, I mean, uh, it was the soldier, after all, who was paying the, for his own equipment, um, when we consider it fully imperial times. Soldier had loads of equipment, they had to spend quite a bit of money for it, so, you know, changing from an open face helmet to a closed one wouldn't have really made a huge difference, I think, a huge impact on the amount of money they were had to spend on their equipment. So in this case, I don't think it's a matter of price, I think it's a matter of necessity, and like Matt Easton says, an open-faced helmet is perfect for a soldier because it allows him to do his job properly, and I think a gladiatorial helmet is perfect from a, for a gladiator and allows him to do his job, but the job of a gladiator and the job of a soldier are completely different. A gladiator didn't really need to, to hear commands, a gladiator didn't really need to work as in, in formation, it, it's a completely different kettle of fish, and I think the fact that Romans, as many other population chose not to use fully closed helmets for the majority of their army is again proof that open face helmets are more effective for infantry troops and for the bulk of the army. All right, number ones, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. Check out the original video, leave a comment below, say hello from the Metatron's community on Herbal Ones, and remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.